Our partners at Bet Online continue to be your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, all the latest fighting news, and this season's NFL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV to get the bonus and get into action. Bet online where the game starts. Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are here with Supreme McGriff. McGriff. I can't even say Supreme McGriff now. Jr. Supreme McGriff Jr. in the motherfucking house. Thank you for coming here, here on Private Talk. You know, it's Miami style, so we're doing a little bit things different. It's mm-hmm. not my normal setup, but I appreciate you for coming, taking the time, and coming to chop it with Miss Texas. I ha- Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. You jerked off to me before. Absolutely. You know, I'm always really impressed about the people that come because some people play it cool. Some people, you know, you have your own lane. You have your own thing that you're doing. You're an entrepreneur. You're doing fashion, music. You do all these kinds of stuff. That So it's cool to see things collide mm-hmm. and how you collaborate, how people just talk as people. Because, you know, in the beginning, you've been here for quite some time. Yeah, we've, been, cool. we've been hanging out for a minute. We've been having some drinks so we can, you know, get this whole thing popping the right way, the yeah. Team Texas way. And um, you definitely played it cool. Yeah, but I didn't make it a The hot. thing is, is I also knew you didn't look at me in the eyes for quite some time. So that's <laughs> always a one, like, giveaway that, you know, you're like, oh, should I? No, or you're should lying. I not? She's, she's lying. I looked in her eyes. Mm, I don't know. Because when you don't look people in the eye, that means you're scared of them or intimidated. And I definitely looked it's to you. Not- I made eye contact. With you. you did to the point when you first met me 1,010%. But as the conversations progressed, you could see where you were trying to, like, you know, the thoughts were bubbling, the things were coming out. You were like, how do you talk? Oh, no. I Negative. Mean, you can take it how you <laughs> receive it. So when was the last time you watched an Alexis Texas film? Um, and be honest. I, I have this button. Normally it says, I want the truth, and I no, want the motherfucking truth. I'm going to only give you the truth. We appreciate that here. Um, I'm maybe a year ago. A year ago? Yeah, maybe okay. like a year what ago. What was I doing? Can you describe? He was bouncing on dick. That's what she was doing. And it was, I think it was reverse cowgirl. I never. It was reverse done cowgirl. That. That's a good one. And and that's like that's my your, favorite one your for you. Your finisher move? For you, that's my favorite one. Reverse cowgirl. But I do you gotta like see that? the ass. I was I gonna say it's because it's the POV version for yourself when you're not actually listen, fucking for those viewers out there that don't know what that's all about. I'm a super ass guy. But as of late, I've been into titties more. Okay. But my oh, you norm- flipping sides. Yeah, I, a little bit, a little bit, but I've always been an ass guy. So me watching you do the reverse cowgirl, it's crazy. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that about you. If y'all you. haven't seen her do reverse cowgirl, I advise so that you to do gave it. me you gave me a nickname. I mean, you've got like three Big names. Lexi. You gave like three nicknames all together. What can I call you a nickname? McGriff? P2. They call Junior? me P2. P2? Why yeah. P2? Preem Jr. I mean, Pete, second version of Preem. So okay. P2. Okay. Yeah. It's, and it's quicker, it's easier. P2. Because Supreme McGriff Jr. is mad. It's well, like, it's a, it's a mouthful. I yeah. smoke weed. I've been drinking tequila. We're, you know, having a whole P2. thing. P2. 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 Mm-hmm. All right, P2. So let's get into Wait, it. Just shots right here. Uh, my let's shot is right here. We... Okay. Shots Cheers. up. Mm-hmm. You know, we tap shit when Texas. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so talk to me, big Lexi. P2. Let's get into it. So mm-hmm. your dad is a big icon within the game. How did that feel? And did you ever feel that you were in the shadows of him coming in, like coming up and being behind that? And did you feel like you had to like kind of follow up behind what he was doing? Or how did you navigate into your own lanes of doing what you are doing now? Well, um, when I first had started coming outside, I was trying to live up to his name. Okay. Like normally, like that's normal. Like your dad is celebrity. I mean, he's iconic, yeah, you know, in so... the game. And then he's done a lot of big things. So for sure, people will be like, oh, are exactly. you going to be just like your dad? Mm-hmm. Or how do you do things? And then I'm a Virgo, so like... I initially started off like that, but when okay. people started trying to force it on me, or that's what they expected, it kind of pissed me off. Okay. So I'm like, now I'm not going to... And it pissed you off because you didn't feel like it belonged to you? Or did it piss you off because it was someone trying to put you in a box that, you know, that you weren't ready to be in? The box thing, definitely. Okay. They were trying to put me in a box and like, nah, you can't put me in a box. I'm going to always do my own thing. I'm not never going to follow behind nobody. I mean, of course, I'm taking his legacy and I'm transcending it into another dimension and I'm into fashion now. I'm I'm taking the brand and changing it, but like I'm gonna do it my way, my own. Like I don't So does he support what you're doing? Do you have a good relationship with him now? Is he like, you know, a business partner in what you're doing or is it completely separate sides? I mean I feel like that's my dad. So of course he's like a business partner, but um, you know, he's doing his thing. He's doing documentaries. He's putting together some movies. They're gonna make a movie on him. 
He has another documentary coming out. He, Nas actually just did a documentary on him okay. last year. So, like, he's doing, like, he's one of those people, like, you do your thing and I'm going to do my thing. And then you feel me? Like, yeah. So let's get a little of a scenario of, like, all of who you are. So how old were you when he went away? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. So did you, you know, being around the life and being around, you know, what he is and what he, all that he is, was that intimidating? Do you think like, oh, that's they just my dad? They kept okay, me away so from They kept me away from it. So you knew nothing. It no, was I didn't know nothing about that till I was 13. Wait, okay, so 13. Yeah. So when you started to start develop those things, did you have resentment a little bit because he was doing things that took you away from being a father around you? And not that it was intentional. But, you know, there, we do things for our kids so they can help us eat, help us get into better places. I feel like the word resentful or resentment is, like, not the right word. I don't think I ever resented because I understood it. Like, but even at those times, I think feelings are feelings and we should be allowed to do those things. And that's how we work through things on the other <laughs> side is because maybe at this big age you don't. But mm -hmm. being at five and that whatever is, like, you feel sad or you feel upset yeah, or when you, you feel that you, you're lacking of because you don't have this father figure even though i'm sure he's was still big presence even you know being locked up or not yeah but, but when you but when you but when you that young like i feel like uh the kids that are resentful towards their parents is because they want it for shit can i curse on this of course yeah because they wanted shit like they or they needed shit it was a void but i don't ever feel like i had a void like my mother held it down i mm -hmm. was always in luxury cars i went to the best schools like i had the best clothes on so it wasn't a void there. Like, of course, you know, I know my dad is not here, but it wasn't a void, though. You get what I'm saying? Just so, the physical form was the void, but not the yeah, actual but not aspect everything because else. he's still a parent in your life. Exactly. Okay. And my mother definitely was, too. Like, she, I was super spoiled. Okay. I'm the only kid. I'm the youngest grandkid. I was going to say, are you the only child? Yeah, so I was, like, super, super spoiled. So you spoiled. were protected. You were good. Yeah, sheltered. I was and sheltered. And then having your dad being as big as an icon that he was, did his friends kind of pay homage and kind of like mm -hmm. take the support of what that was. Absolutely. So And who uh, were some kind of those key players that kind of made you or molded you maybe into the man that you are today? I was around a lot of his peers. A lot of his peers, they, you know, they 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 took to me like I was almost like they son in a way because mm -hmm. obviously when they see me, they just see him again and he's not here anymore. So like they like, nah, we gotta look out for him. So they for used sure. to they used to come, they used to give me money, they used to take me to dinner, like I was eating at the five star restaurants as a teenager, like before any before so this shit got popular. Now, did you appreciate yeah. what that meant at those things being at a young age, or did you just think like this is my lifestyle, this is what it was always I was born into? That's what it was. Kind of thing. I appreciate it, but then I was like, yeah, this is just this is I normal. gotta accept this, this is is lifestyle, regular. yeah, because it's been this way forever. So having that, like again, I can't, I don't necessarily want to say silver spoon, right? Mm -hmm. But in a sense, it's like you have this length let out for you this planned out for you and all these things how did you obtain and still be able to keep that lifestyle that you're doing currently now because your dad you're a grown man mm -hmm. your mom and you know your mom did well she raised you well whatever but now it's like you you put you off into the, the wild yeah. so how do you continue to maintain that lifestyle and that presence that your dad had to now making it your own where you're p2 and they're not you know not, not necessarily not saying that your dad's not a part of who you are because that's always who you are. Mm -hmm. But how did you step outside that? Like, Well, I just feel like that's in my DNA. Like, me to be a go-getter, me to be ambitious, me to be a lion out here, like, that's just in my DNA. And I love fashion. And I love music. So I said, I'm gonna just take his name and get into every door that I can get into off his name and I'm just gonna take it to the next level. But I also, the, the, the endeavors that I'm doing now, I, love, I have a passion for that. So I feel like if you want to be special, you got to have a passion for what you're doing and you got to be hungry. And I'm both of those things. Like, okay. I don't want to just come through the door and start at the top. Like, I don't mind working. Doing the work. Yeah, I don't mind putting in the work. Okay. Because that's a part so of my journey. So you're spoiled in, your, in adult life. You're willing to work for that what it is. No, I'm still spoiled in adult life. But, but because you earned it. But, but that's yeah, the thing. Because I, because I earned it. Exactly. That's the thing. Is that's why it's like, how do you keep that maintained lifestyle, you know, and where you're like, you've had it before, where you're like, now I like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to, I want to keep what I'm doing and be hungry how I'm doing it. Well, my dad actually is the reason why I'm like that. One of the reasons is because he tells me like, yo, nobody doesn't owe you anything. Like nobody's obligated. So would you say that's the best advice you've ever gotten from your father? Yes. Okay. Definitely. And to owe Nobody wait, owes you nothing. Nobody owes you shit. Okay. You gotta, you feel me? Just cause you my son that, what the fuck that so means? So how does that resonate to your core? Like when someone tells you that and your dad's telling you maybe you're having a heart to heart, you have like, do you speak weekly or No, I mean, well, or... he's, well he's in a, a, a prison right now where they're always on lockdown. Okay. Like somebody's, oh, something's 
crazy is always so it's happening. limited conver- like limited, conversation like very, li- okay. very limited but so when you're having that go to like heart to heart because like everyone needs their dad right yeah. like you wanted to go to advice you do those things he like, always drops gems what, Even, what are some of those gems that you can hear share with us at private um, talk um just uh be leery of humans because humans are always going to disappoint you so don't put all your like faith or all your um just don't put all your energy into um people okay because they definitely going to disappoint you and he also says like don't let it cost you anything like if you know how somebody is you got to just take it for what it is like read the signs on the wall don't never avoid the signs on the wall because the universe is going to show you who you're dealing with it's up to you whether you deal with them or you don't deal with them or how you deal with them so he just very made me very con- yeah. I don't want to say I don't trust people but but you're cautious of what definitely. people bring inside you and that's the thing is for me is like no one gave me anything Mm -hmm. i've made everything that i've done myself Mm -hmm. but from um experience and time put in and doing whatever because it's like you will never be able to walk the shoes your dad ever did is because he's your dad right and that's his own thing Mm -hmm. but they embrace what you do and they want to like keep a legacy to a point where there is footprints sewed in Mm -hmm. that you can step upon Mm -hmm. and make it your own or do your own thing and that's why it's like his experiences will never be your own but taking the knowledge and taking it to your own accord is I think what's more powerful in it all is because it could go one ear in and out the other and never be attested to the time of who you really are as a man Mm -hmm. and I think that that's really telling to the man that you are today is taking those things and making them true fruition to what you're being successful at present day absolutely and i think that that's the you know my biggest point was today in this interview was that you know i've heard stories about your dad you know i've been around people that were with your dad and those things and they're all high up you know power things and yeah. you know stories that we would never even know but it's like oh damn or whatever you know what i mean and, and, and respect yeah but it's like we'll never be in those times with those people so we can even appreciate we say that with those things but we're like oh but how can i do me how can I make this thing your own thing? And I think that it's really telling just of your personality and who speaks of you as who you are. Absolutely. Of how you're showing up in the game now. Absolutely. So let's talk about where you are present day. Mm-hmm. You said you love fashion. Definitely. You're doing all that. You're an entrepreneur. What entrepreneurship things are you dabbling in now and kind of like really going full force? Well, um, just I did. A, I started a podcast this year. Okay. So I had like a whole list of things. What's your podcast called? It's called Rich in the Hood. Okay. Yeah. So um, I started a part. Po- uh, when the year started, my New Year's resolution was to like do everything I had in my notes because instead of me just writing in the journal, I just put it in my notes. It's easier. So I had like six things. The new in- age kids. Yeah, exactly. But- um, I had six things written in my notes that I wanted to do this year. Okay. But I just, I didn't think I was going to do all six. But you did them. I did all, I did five out of the six. That's and great. So I so Congratulations. Um, yeah, I, I launched the jackets. Okay. They're going crazy right now. So super viral. What is your, is it a clothing line that you have or is it just like one item pieces? No, no, like what no. is okay, it? So, so what is your clothing line? or it's, how a clo- can we- it's a clothing line, but it's a collection. Okay. So I have hoodies. I have t-shirts. I have jackets, the hats, and some leather, because I put out a varsity jacket. Okay. But I have leather jackets and hats to, that's going to come out. That's going to be my next collection. So I don't really want to do like. You're doing like limited edition. Limited edition stuff. pieces. Okay. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. It's a collection. So. What yeah, is it called? It's the Supreme Team. Okay. That's, Supreme that's, Team. That's the name of the okay. brand. Supreme. The Supreme Team brand. So the real Supreme Team brand. And is it called the real Supreme, no, just Supreme Team? Supreme just, Team. Just, okay. Okay. Just okay. The Supreme Team. But it's yeah. just no fake shit. Yeah. No yeah. 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 Shit. I got, I got There's a lot of people know. that I'm sure out there that try to do Full things or whatever. Shit. Exactly. But say so. It's only Supreme Team, the only legit shit. So exactly. we started with the jackets. No, we started with the shirts. Then we went to the hoodies. Okay. And now the we jacket's just a new piece. The jacket's just a new piece that just came out last month. So, so is got, there a website that we can go and absolutely. get those? The link, the link is right in my bio. Okay. When you go to my Instagram, Supreme underscore McGriff. The link is right there. And now, both. all of that generated from you being in fashion and you liking. I'm going to tell you how it started, right? That too. But my dad was in the 80s. So he influenced a lot of rappers from that era on how to dress because they was all looking up to him as far as with the fashion show. So, so he was that fly, that exa- fly guy. Exactly. That's so, how he got your mama. Look. look. Exa- <laughs> exactly. So um, I pretty much took those aesthetic pictures from back in the days like you know everybody loves those nostalgic okay. pictures and how they used to dress like with the track suits or with the bomber jackets or with the 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 fur coats like 
I feel like the 80s, the 70s and the 80s influenced fashion. And it's also the time right now that's being rebirthed. Exactly. Because everything has time. It's back. a time capsule, but exactly. they also do it too. I think that with, you know, the newer generation of seeing things, you put your own flair on it, you put your own spice, you know, whatever. And I say it's just people like fly shit. Exactly. And I think there's only so many fly things that you can do without, in a sense, not duplicating, but mm-hmm. making it your own. Yeah, and we and we are heavily influenced by the 80s and 90s in fashion. So, um, you know, I had an idea. Me and my me and my partner had an idea. Gotta um, cause Nas put the doc Nas did a documentary on my dad last year, and the the thumbnail or the picture for the documentary was them in the Supreme Team jackets. Dope. So me and my um boy Gutter, we was like, yo, we should put them jackets back out, bro. And then we put them out. We did okay. what we said we was gonna do, and they're going crazy. And they went, they flew off the shelves. They're going crazy right now. Okay. I got them in Fat. Got one on Fat Joe. I'm gonna wait for mine. Don't on, worry. I got one. <clears throat> <come on. throat> we you locked in. Told, you already we told me. I, they, the last one got sent no, away. No, I gave my last one to Rick Ross yesterday. I mean, that's not a bad person to give it to. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna front, even though I wasn't there to mm-hmm. you know celebrate it at all. But you know, I'm gonna be expecting mine because you know this, big yeah. things pop. And uh, what's your favorite color? What's your two favorite colors? Oh, yeah. I like green because it's about money. Okay. And, and you got on green right you know, now. You know, you know, you know, that's the me money with right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I so see. Those I are the see. jackets. And Dapper Dan is another person. So that is, have... it, is it all, is it, is that just the color scheme for this? Yeah. Just one? for this okay, collection. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. But, the, but the leather jackets I'm going to do, I'm going to have another color. I think I'm going to do the leather jackets black. Okay. Black gold. Maybe we could collab, you know. I'm That'd into this, dope. you know, fashion shit too. I like, I know what I like and I know what looks good. I mean, yeah, yeah or, you, or you could be one of the models. No, I like to have ownership. <laughs> I need a piece of something. Say you less. Know what I'm Say you less. Know what I'm saying? Say less. You know? So, okay, now going back, we're like the flip-flopping, right? Because mm-hmm. we want to, like, I think part of how you were brought up and raised into this game, too, is also speaks volumes of what it is. I totally forgot about the Bel Air bottle. We didn't have one, did we? Oh, shit. I mean, Ross gonna be mad at me. Y'all, Ross better. He gave us a case. He should have. <laughs> it would it have been right here. But you know, I think they so probably drunk them shits last night. Ross, they really did. Ross, they drunk all the Bel Air bottles that was in last night. They did drink. Bro. Honestly, they did have a lot of bottles from the Tyson show, and then coming in yeah. here, and a lot Let of things were gone. Oh, we're doing this. I'll give you one right now. What's up? You like making eye contact with people when you're talking to them. I noticed that about you. I do because I feel like it makes it more genuine. Does it make you nervous? You love using. Do men get nervous around you? One thousand and ten percent. Because I feel like you love using that word nervous. I don't love using it, but I think that it's under context of what is relevant and what's yeah. going on. And I I'm think that most people nervous. who are going to say something that don't like eye contact for me, it's like I can't interview you and be like, "So, guys, let yeah. me ask you a question." I yeah. just don't think it's as fluid as in more like for me. This ain't here. Mm-hmm. It's about like we getting to know each other. That's more, like my whole more, con- more intimate or no. Well, the whole reason why is like my podcast is called Private Talk. Is it's a private conversation. We don't know each other in the beginning, but at the end we're gonna be best friends because we're talking real shit. It's about. I mean, normally I have cards, whatever, but I felt like in this whole Organic. environment mm-hmm. was more about getting to know you and how we have a conversation and we go back and forth because mm-hmm. then it's more authentic than having staged questions. But do you like making people nervous when you look at them? I, don't, I think you like I it. don't intend to make people nervous. I can't help that my eyes speak to your soul and that just happens. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, baby. <laughs> yeah, you talk like a New Yorker. You got a lot of confidence. Me. And yeah, you got a lot of confidence. I like that. And that's a bad thing? Never. No, that's a great well, thing. Kind of, that's so... a great thing. But you remind me of a New Yorker. I don't know. I, like the I tech... said, my family is from New York. They're from the Bronx. Oh, I was yeah. raised. That says a lot. That says a lot. Got from you. the mentality of two Bronx individuals that were high school sweethearts that birthed a queen like me. Mm-hmm. And that's just how we do. So for me, I was raised in Texas, but mm-hmm. Texas never really defined who I was. Mm-hmm. It was a great place to be raised and in a safe environment and getting to be my authentic self. But I knew I never fit in there. Like I was just always destined to do other things. And that's why I moved my ass to LA. Is that a true statement about Texas? I think everything's it, bigger in Texas. Yeah. Absolutely. That was like your catchphrase, right? I mean, at one point. I took it and made it my own, there but everything is bigger in Texas. My mm-hmm. ass is 45 inches around facts so you know we do things big and my other thing was go big or go home and miss texas ain't never going home you talk know your, what I'm talk your shit. so i know you got a talk podcast your shit, big Are Lexi. You asking <laughs> 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 my fault i gotta love get back to the interview my bad y'all 
Okay, so you sent your jackets. This is a, your newest thing right now. Mm-hmm. What other endeavors are you dabbling in? You said you have an artist or like what kind have, of things are you so doing? I, so I work with a lot of producers and artists. So okay. I just middleman a lot of stuff for them. So if I have a rapper that I met in California for me doing an interview in California and me just networking, I'll plug that artist with my... So why pro- do they trust your vision? Is it because... they see how I move. Okay. And when you have, if you have one conversation with me, that's all you need to do. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to do. You to just know that you can plug and play whoever you need to be in those I'm situations. A doc, I'm a dot connector. A dot connector. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Dot Connector. Yeah, Maybe I'm that's your nickname. Who knows? Who knows? Know. DC. For me, I'm always DC. I like DC. I'm always sure about sweet. nicknames because I feel like it makes it more personal or whatever your story is. And see, I call to you Big Lexi. Things. Big Lex. Hey, you know. You know what I mean? But what makes me big? That makes booty, me. though. Your, your mentality. <laughs> your mentality and the booty. I like that. I Brains like that. and booty. B B. Feel me. I can't make that my my um my agency though. Brains and booty. That's <laughs> fire though. Yeah, but then that discriminates. You couldn't be the first man that's gonna be represented if I... it's brains and booty. Respect. You know, Pause. so it's like I gotta Pause. I gotta make it you know a universal, universal neutral unisex. thing where it's like we're all boss bitches, men. I can't even say bitches and <laughs> boys. <laughs> I respect. No, but you ain't a boy. You're a man. So it's like you want to make certain things. Neutral for everyone that's inviting to things. So I'm still working we, on we'll the name. We'll work on the name. We'll work on the I name. Still like, Are we going to collaborate on the name or no? We can. Okay. I mean, you know. So we're going to be partners or I'm just going to be a talent? See, that, I'm just going to sign a talent look, agreement. See, that's how you know. He be talking to people that know shit. Like, oh, partnership as I just try to pull on him on the jackets. I got that from you. You I just, just told said, me everything partnership. The jackets. Yeah, everything yeah, is a partnership. You know, you know, maybe. We'll talk. We'll see. Maybe small percentages, you know. There's I'm big cool things popping. I'm cool. I'm cool with any percentage. At least you have like, you know, a little. Mm-hmm. On the wall. A little there you bit. go. Get my plaque on the okay. wall. Okay. Who was out of your dad's like influences of being around and like the people he was? Is somewhere that you mentor as well, or was it maybe a mentor to you, or that you probably look to look up to, or even still maybe speak to today? Um. Okay. Well, it's this guy named Blackhand Chaz. Okay. Who was one of my father's closest friends from Queens, and he's also a legend in the game. Okay. I, he definitely uh mentored me a lot um growing up. And from afar, I would say Jay-Z, because Jay-Z and my dad had a relationship too. But um, from afar, I definitely, like, emulate a lot of the stuff that I see Jay-Z do and, like, how he move and, like, his mannerisms and, like, you know, like, definitely Jove, definitely. That's one okay. of the people um I look up to as far as, like, his business cool. acumen and everything. All right. Yeah. Is there anyone that, when your dad got locked up, that stopped fucking with y'all in general or like basically nah. like uh, everybody was just loyal shockingly okay i mean i feel like i get a lot of love okay because your dad's turned a lot of things and inadvertently if not or mm-hmm. people knowing what it was mm-hmm. so it's like you always wonder is like is it really the code of like you see the movies and all these you know even documentaries now it's like does it really portray where it's like you're really taken care of and in certain situations i mean or I went, is it the knowledge of but, and just being around those people that is you're taking care of because that's knowledge is power as well yeah that's that's true but i don't really like i told you earlier i don't feel like i ever wanted for nothing like my mother was like but my I mother don't got a good think job that so. being a kid at those times and those times too is sometimes they just oh are they pay homage to your father that mm-hmm. want to show you more because your dad's not physically there. That too. You Definitely know, so it's too. like, because I think like every really man needs to have a, a father figure yeah. of source present or even, you know, emotionally and those things to like kind of go to because your mom, as much as a boss as she is, is can, there's man, only so many things man. that you can do that we just don't know yeah, that's or a, have insight to give that a man could provide in those natures. You ever heard the saying of, it takes a village to raise a child? thousand and ten percent. And I feel like that that was the instance with me. Like, okay. I feel like I had a lot of role models, you know, growing up as I got older, definitely. And then um, when my uncle came home from jail, that's really when I started, like, meeting more of my dad's friends. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I feel like once my uncle came home and he was bringing me around everybody, like, that made they knew. more, yeah, okay. yeah, it, it, it yeah. was, yeah, definitely. Because that's the thing, now you're also an adult, you're not a kid, mm-hmm. you're more in those situations, so it's kind of kind of bringing you into, like, definitely that kind of thing. Did you ever feel like you missed out because your dad not being there with, in that sense of being older and then having it from your, like, in a sense, uncle? No. No? mm Because I feel like whatever was meant for you in life is going to be for you. So Facts. if it was in the cars for me not to have a dad growing up and to go through what I went through, I'm cool with that. Okay. I'm not one of those people that'd be like, damn, what if? Or hypothetically, nah, I'm good with how everything turned out. But I like that. Yeah. So, okay, we talked about the business part of that. Mm-hmm. So now, also, 
with business comes pleasure. So there was a lot of ladies, a lot of where that was at a time where they kind of, you know, murdering and all those things made music for the ladies. You're really funny. And why am I funny? Because I know shit. No, I'm, you're funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't expect you to know this much in detail, but yeah, I, I love it. I know everything. You I know, you may know people, but I know people too. So I love it. That, it is. Private talk, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it's a private conversation mm -hmm. between friends, but now we homies. So, so with Murder Rape going in, you're doing, you like, R&B music really at that time, 2000s, was like for the ladies. Mm -hmm. It was like there was so much other shit going on or whatever, but they really brought it too. So they were fucking mad bitches. They were doing things. So Allegedly. I, don't, I didn't. That's her talking, y'all. Allegedly. Hey, I'm just saying about the times. I ain't, pin, a, I ain't pinpointing anybody. Okay, but I'm just saying oh, okay, yeah. the genre of that time mm -hmm. and that music, whatever, it, it opened up a lot of things for people, right? Mm -hmm. So within that field of things too, how promiscuous of a man are you? Have you been one of those people that just engulf in that whole world too, where it's like pussy just comes to you? Is it one of those things where it's like you maybe try, not tried harder, because I don't think men need to try whatever, but it's mm. like being who you are. Like, did that have any effect on how My you... Pussy rate. Your pussy rate? Yeah, definitely. Me being who I am definitely have has an so effect on So pussy's been thrown at you a lot. Absolutely. Has anybody ever been like, have they fucked your dad and they want to fuck you too? Definitely. Have you done it? Yes. Have they said any reviews? Is it like a Yelp review? So they, so they got an like Uber review? I, 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 Five stars, baby. You know, I haven't been compared to my dad. I think that's kind of weird. But I mean, for you, but if the bitch who's fucking you and your dad at that one point, I yeah. mean, there has to be like, but I, oh, baby, you are better than your dad. Or, oh, it's bigger than who knows? I like, I like. <laughs> Just Listen, saying. yo, that's the Casamigos talking, but um, mm. it's really not. I that's, was, just, that's you base level. I thought, I thought those questions prior to, but the Casamigos maybe brought it out just at this moment. But Got there's you. segues in everything I do. Well, now if I did it, I think it'd be funny because I have my dad tattooed on my hand, mm. so they kind of like. Would you say kiss him right now? Yeah, I, I definitely kiss, tell him that. The kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, no, nah, I never got compared to my dad or anything like that. But how like, many? Okay, two. Two. Yeah. Okay. Was it weird to you when they approached you at first? I was younger, so it was, like, exciting to me. I was, like, 18, 19, and they was in a, like, late... See, I would think younger would almost make me intimidated. I don't get intimidated. But, it, like, no, never? Never. So, I don't know. Like, for me, even, like, being Alexis, Texas, right? Like, I... Uh, there are certain times... Not that I'm in... Maybe intimidated isn't the right word, but you questioning some things. Like, for me, it's, like, the first time like, I hear... Like, what's the motive? Some, that and the second part is like it's just more of like um, are you overthinker 1000 that's why you that's why you're saying that 1000 that's what i'm saying me being alexis texas i'm a highly sexual person i me love too. sex i love everything about it i love people who are in tune to what they really know and want it may not be for me, but for, you know, for them, the, the fact that you could be openly explicit about what you want yeah. is a turn on. Absolutely. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to pop it, a pussy's fucking handstand type situation every fucking time. But if it gets there, maybe. But yeah. with all of that saying is most times people who say, oh, I'm such a big fan of you. I know it's not going to go well. Yeah, exactly. Because... I'm an overthinker, but now you're in your head. Yeah. Because now you're thinking about all the dicks that I fucked. Are you adequate? Are you this, that, whatever? Well, that's, that's, that's men with low self-esteem, though. True, but this is also the female part of me. But for you being the man, right, is like you don't have the same worries. And not that I have worry about them, but I almost feel bad for them because I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to sit here where you're jerking your dick off and you can't even get hard. Uh, but, tragic. Yeah. So for you Sound in like this situation, 1,010% <laughs> is why I'm giving you the scenario. <laughs> Got, got, got you. porn sets. It's happened in my regular life. A lot of things. Yeah. But you being the man, right? Because mm -hmm. now you're the one who has to get hard. You got to, like, go time is go time if we're not around. I like foreplay, though. Like, okay. Like but, it, like, but even with foreplay, you have to be hard or into it. Yeah, but I feel like foreplay is like, okay, hypothetically speaking, if this was me and you in a situation, right, and I'm somebody that grew up watching you and shit like that, like, the way for me to um relax myself, that way we won't have any technical difficulties. Okay. It's definitely Casamigos. Have a nice little drink. Just get relaxed. Mm. I feel like when people be in their head too much, the remedy to that is just relaxing. 
to a point, but then some people get too relaxed and they can't perform. I've had people who are like, they either took substances. Like at one time I was in a situation mm -hmm. where they felt like, which I thought was a horrible situation. They took ecstasy thinking that it'd be great. Horrible situation. I don't do those dr that drug at all. No, I'm Never. a weed smoker. I have, mm -hmm. but that's not my recreational where if I'm going to like hang out with someone for the first time, I'm like, let's pop some, not my thing. Yeah. So it was horrible. Horrible, mm -hmm. horrible, mm -hmm. horrible. <laughs> so wow. for me, it's like, that's a them problem, right? It's not a me thing because I know what is my situation, but I don't have to perform in a sense like you do. So when you have these ladies coming at you and you're like, and like, if they're saying it's about your dad or they're like, oh, I just like those jackets or you're just sexy or you're handsome or whatever. I think it's that the last one you said. It's not so much about my dad and other stuff. It's just but I'm just saying, yeah. I'm saying the, the plethora of what, conversations could come at you mm -hmm. at those times. Like, yeah. So the things that we've talked about this, you That's know, a conversation is, a turn is off. okay, but you don't think it's a turn on me like, oh, I love all your C's. That's not making my pussy wet. I, it's I, making my pussy dry, actually. Yeah, I think because I know that shit. you know in your head that you can't fuck me like those dudes on the camera, or you allegedly think that. Mm -hmm. So then they take themselves out of the game and I'm like, oh, this is going to be horrible. I yeah. give it a chance. Mm -hmm. I have twice, but not anymore. Third time, <laughs> <I'm proud> <laughs> <of>. <laughs> Out of here. Got you. So does any of those situations ever happen to where, like, are you just always ready to go? You're horny, ready? I'm always, my libido is ridiculous. So what's the craziest sex story you've ever had? Um, I fucked a girl with, Don't one, look away. with, one, arm, with one arm. One arm? What yeah. does that mean? Like, she had a no. Oh, she did? I thought you. Like, I was like, no, what is No, no, no. She had, like, did she, she got into a car accident. Okay. And she's like, this is off. So she had, like, a no. Did she, she a, use it in inappropriate ways? No, but like. Did she stick it anywhere? No. That's asking. <laughs> no wet nubs. <laughs> nah, she ain't stick her nub nowhere, but. So, okay, I had sex with a girl that had. I would try it after a while. I mean, where if would you're, you stick your nub at, though? In my own pussy, if maybe. Mm, nah. If you had, why not? Mm. It would be the same thing as fingering yourself, but it's you're using what you have, your limbs, right? Nah. Um, <laughs> another crazy thing, uh, of course I had movie theater sex, fucked the girl in Times Square and the McDonald's bathroom before, car sex, car sex is regular to me, people be, if, have if you, you ever had sex on an airplane? No, mm. I haven't. That's on your list. Definitely. What's okay. that, the Mile High Club? That is Mile High yeah, Club. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, you say you're a part of it? I am. On a PJ or on a regular plane? Regular plane. Regular commercial Southwest. plane? Southwest. From Miami to LA. That's dope. How was it? It was. It was, was it turbulence. Any turbulence? There was no turbulence. Mm -hmm. um, it was a night flight. It was a side. It was a side spoon situation. Mm -hmm. um, and then halfway through, I was just like, "Oh, the lady kept walking through," so I was like, uh, "I'm just getting a little nervous." So I stopped. Y'all did it in the aisle. No, we were in, in the, the seat. No, we were in the yeah, seat. Yeah, in the aisle. That's what I mean. In the seats. But the aisle is the aisle. Okay, the, in the seat. seat is okay, the seat. yeah. Y'all did he it was, in the row. Yeah, in the row. And it was just y'all two in that row. Yeah. That's dope. So I did a little like this. Mm -hmm. And then I had a blanket. And okay. I was, you know, and then we were fucking. And then I was like, oh, the lady kept walking through, but she couldn't know, but I didn't know if she didn't know. And I was like, oh, this is a federal offense. Is we're on a plate. Is it a federal offense? Anything you do, I think, I on think an that's airplane. Just a, but fine, I don't think. But you're, we're naked, fucking. I'm sure there's a lot of things that they could like. You, uh, mm, mm, maybe. I don't know. You can look into it. I'm not trying yeah. to get those. I'm not trying to get those charged. <laughs> yeah, I feel like. Uh, so I was like, so I stopped, and then he was like, "Well, I'm gonna finish," and I was like, "Well, do you?" So he jerked off in the pillow and then called it a day. Oh but, gosh, <laughs> what the fuck? I guess I gave him blue. I didn't want to give him blue. That's balls. what I was about to say. That's so probably what that things. was about to be. That's the why he blue finished. Blue lips are a situation. Where did he finish too? at? In the pillow. Watch out for those pillows. <laughs> that was a that was a wasted. Uh, I feel like that was a wasted moment. Where was he supposed to come? And you. N fuck no. I'm not in you, but no on babies. you though. Not no, on you. thank you. Why you don't want babies? From the man that was fucking in the Southwest But you do want airplane? babies in general, though. Possibly, maybe one day if the situation's correct, but not on a Southwest airplane. Like, how are you made? No, I'm not I having I think that's a dope story to tell your kids, though. You no, made sir. In the, absolutely in the, in the, in the, not. In the, in the, Miss Texas does not condone that message. Oh. I don't <laughs> you better think... pull the fuck out or fucking do something <laughs> about your son. Heard you. You better, <laughs> you better testify. <laughs> What you doing? All right. So now, since we're going into like the little bit more sexier questions, whatever, we're gonna play my favorite part of, the, of my it. episode. If this is your favorite it's part. It's gonna be my Truth favorite with part. Truth with Texas. 
Okay, cool. Truth or Texas is a little bit more riskier, a little bit more different questions that we're already getting to know you a little bit more intimately. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're warmed up, primed, ready. Let's go. That sounds real sexual. So it's like a yes or no type of thing, or? Uh, I mean, you take it as it. We're going to ask you some questions. Say less. So it's romantic, kinky, um, naughty, mm -hmm. and spicy. I no, think that's I, the genre of questions. Yes. Okay, so there's four types of questions. I get to pick which ones. I'm going to go through all of them. I'm going right, to go a couple of a couple, three to four questions in each category. Get to know you a little bit more better. And then after all of that, since you've given me all of that, I'll let you ask Miss Texas two questions because I feel like you had multiple questions. And I might only give one. But I'm going to give you two. You speak in third person a lot. That's what the brand's like. <laughs> all right. We're going to start with Naughty. Okay, let's get it. All right, naughty questions. Mm -hmm. What is your biggest turn off? What is something that a Hygiene. girl can do that just makes your dick completely not? And it? talk too much. If okay. you talk too much, talk too much during sex or talk too much in general. In general. Well, then you hate me because I, like I when, talk a lot. Yeah, I'll, no, but look, I'll, when you talking during sex, it's fire. Like I want you to talk nasty. But talk talking that, in general, like too if, much. No, I like having conversations. Okay. But when you just yeah 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 yeah, I like shut the fuck. Mm. No man wants to hear no woman talk talk like that. Like mm. it's a turn off. So you're speaking for all men. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Turn off. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Doggy or missionary? You gotta pick doggy. one. Doggy. Okay. Okay. Doggy. Damn. Does booty doggy. size matter? If you're as a girl and you were like you know vibing or whatever. Does the ass size matter if she was flat booty all together? Could you still get it done? Or would you just be like, nah? I mean, you know, you said you're a titty man right now. No, nah, I don't think the ass size matter. Okay. It helps. It's always, it's okay. always a plus. Okay. So it's but extra it, points in the beginning, but not a Yeah, it deterrent. don't matter because skinny girls, like, I feel like me personally. Well, then I can't say that because fat girls get wet too. But skinny girls. All pussy gets wet. If you treat it right. Yeah, but it's different type. It's different levels to wet. The same way we talked about pregnant pussy. Yeah, that's true. All pussies are going to get wet and you give it the right attention and love. That's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. But no, nah, ass size don't matter, though. Doesn't matter? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, this is a like a, a going question that mm -hmm. I realize, or having, um, I have a lot of men friend, man friends. So we're having a conversation, whatever. Obviously, they ask me a lot of sexual questions. And I didn't even know this was a really thing. Mm -hmm. But have you ever faked an orgasm? No, never. You, you never fake came and it was like, oh, Matter that's of fact, great. And just to get rid of her, like, and then be over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have. See, that's a thing. And I did not understand how that even happened. You know what it is? Okay, so if I'm wearing a condom and I do 94% of the time. Mm, 94, condom, not 95. We got 94. Yeah, like 94% of the time. Were you born in 94? What the... <laughs> <laughs> but um okay so if i'm having sex with a girl and i have condom i'm having condom sex okay and you can't really nothing con like condoms like that so you never came in a condom no i have okay but it takes a long time okay and if i'm just so over her pussy was still good but you were just like you can you really gonna tell go. the pussy good if you got a condom on though yeah i, don't think you can I really... mean i don't have a dick so i don't really know I but don't, I me think... I, my personal experience you can't really like if you, so you're one of those you're nut, like, eh. No, no, no. Just because you nut don't mean that the pussy was good. I believe that. Yeah, true. so like you could but just. But you can't feel from one condom to the next in different pussies. If you had five pussies lined up and they were all condom sex, you wouldn't be able to tell which pussy was better than the other? No. No. Mm -mm. So you just think this just. Rural sex is better. Can we agree on that? I'm not denying that, but I'm also a porn star, but I also don't really, I don't have a dick, so I don't know. Is it better if for I you? Were to stick, like for me, if I were to stick my dick that I don't have, hypothetically, into five different things, right? And I had a condom, it was the same variable. I feel like I would be able to tell the no. difference between, no. one, they're not going to all feel the same. No, impossible. I don't know. God, you can't I wish I had a dick condom. for a day so I could really make these decisions and have this answer as a correct answer because I don't, just because you fuck a lot doesn't mean that you're good at fucking either. That's true. So, you that's know what very I mean? True. So it's like, but if I'm putting my dick in something that's di a different type of hole, you're either a big hole, a small hole, a wait, tight we, hole, wait, wait, a wet wait, 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 hole, can a we stop? hole. Like... I don't, don't want to keep imagining you with a, like, let's cut that out. Uh, Imagine being what? You could go online right now and watch me get fucked by millions of people. Not millions of people. No, I don't want to <laughs> think about you having a dick, though. Oh, no, but hypothetically, why for me to, like, talk about Making a how do you a, a feel though as a female? Is it better with 
condoms on or raw. Well, I'm a horny bitch, so I'm going to say raw all the time. Yeah, exactly. So but, then if it's best for you... But I've also had condom sex that's still great. I just can't be greedy about what I'm doing. Nah, My condom psychological sex is about what t- like turns me on is way different than what you... So what turns you on? Really a lot of different things. I can Give me fucking, two. Two or three. Can, but see, my... Okay, again, I'm such a sexual person that... I could watch regular TV and masturbate, and not that anything turns me on. It's just I know what turns me on. So I'm just bored, so I'm fucking myself, not because okay, I need so, something. So you a real, real... 110%. Corny motherfucker. 1,000. I should have been a man, and I'm a Puerto Rican, and I have a so sex drive like a man. So the I, news make so, you horny? No, I don't watch the news, because that's depressing gotcha. in general. Gotcha. Would you, be able, would you be able to play with yourself if you were depressed? I'm sure I've done it. I've been depressed in my life. So, yeah, gotcha. definitely going to. I think that that enheightens my... Orgasms? No, and ha- it enheightens my happiness. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. Like, it's a little dose of oxytocin. Got gotcha. you. Whatever. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. All right, moving on. Mm-hmm. Spicy questions. Mm-hmm. How many partners have you had? If you could round it off in your lifetime. Probably over a thousand. Over a thousand? Yeah. How old are you? 28. 28. And at that, yeah. when did you start fucking? Probably like 16. 16, a thousand. I think you have me beat. How soon I have you beat? Because porn stars, we all fuck the same people. There's about 20 fucking porn people, and I've done over 500 movies, but there are about 12 people that I've fucked. Ever? Well, not ever, but in porn, but I've been in porn for over 20 years, so I don't really fuck that much off camera. You don't? I've been in, I've been married, divorced, happily. Um, happily divorced? Yes. That's the first time I heard that one. Uh, happily divorced. Got you. Um... I'm a long term. I usually have relationships, and then I mean, I haven't been in a relationship in over three, maybe four years. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I don't fuck a lot off camera. Yeah, about it's a thousand. Not... I would say a thousand for me, though. I feel like I did this number. Trisha was my number when we did. Was it a? I feel like I lied. I maybe. I don't think I lied intentionally, but I was mm-hmm. well talking about all together. I think I said a hundred, but I think that that number is low. You think you lowballed yourself? I think I did. Uh, we, but just, not we just go. We just go say one fifty just to be on the safe side. No, like I probably like. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm not trying to make myself cooler, but five hundred men sounds more like it doesn't even sound like attainable from the porn people. So let's say maybe if all maybe two from 200. I started when I was sixteen mm-hmm. to I'm thirty eight now. Okay. I don't really know what that says about me. If that makes better or worse, but um, I, we got to do the I math like on my, it. I know. I like the math. It's just I just. For me, I was just more into, for at least 10, 12 years, I worked. I worked five days a week. So when you're fucking that much, like, you're, like sex is, is a different part. Like, I'm a sexual athlete, so I'm giving you guys what you need. Got you. What was I getting? Got you. I did come every time, though. You're welcome. Every scene? 1,000. If I wasn't getting mine, you're not getting yours. And then we're always going to get mine. What would you say is your best move in the bedroom? My if best was, move. Yeah, what's your like when okay. it's like fate? <laughs> okay, what's going um, to be the end game? When I'm when I'm doing missionary, standing up off the bed though, like I like I. So she's hanging I'll, off her booty cheeks. Not, and just... yeah, I'm pull her to the end of the bed. Okay, and I'm standing up, and like that's my finishing move because I can. Are you coming inside her, coming all over her, making her eat it? What are we doing? I like pulling out and making them eat it. Okay, but on their knees or where they're at. Where, wherever they at. Okay, or wherever I can get to quick enough. Could you shoot it in her face? I've done that a lot. Have you came in any girl's eyes? Yes, on their lashes, yeah. On purpose? Yeah. Uh, you're an asshole. It's like having babies go in your eyes. It does not feel great. That's my finishing move, though. That's my In most... your eyes? Yeah. Oh, no, sir. We could never have sex. So you killed them. Oh, uh, well, then I take <laughs> that back. You come in people's eyes? That's no, I, 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 that, that, that's not like... You said uh, that's your finisher move. I come in their eyelashes. No, I was saying my... Fighting no, someone. I was saying my... I would be like, you fucking No, I'm saying what? my... I can pay for the lashes, though. But I don't I, give a fuck. I got, they can rip these off. I don't got those extensions. No, my finishing <laughs> move is off the end of the bed. Missionary standing up. That's okay, my finishing okay, move. Okay, You're yeah. going to take back your coming situation. Yeah, I'm taking that back. <laughs> All right, kinky questions. Go ahead. Let's get it. Favorite time of day to have sex? Are you nighttime, morning time, middle day, anytime? I love what? all of them. Okay, all but of them. But I think... When are you the most horniest, I, I was about to say, I think I'm more hard in the morning. Okay. Like, I'm always hard. Always hard. Never had the issue with that. But in the morning, though, that wood in the morning is just different. Different. So as soon as the, the sun as soon as the sun come up, I'm like Ready. the hardest. 
Rock hard and ready to yeah, go, so baby. I would, say, I, I would say morning. Okay. Yes. Let's see. Have you ever been caught masturbating? Yep. Did you keep going or did Absolutely. you stop? Absolutely. I'm did not you fucking... make them join in? No. Or you were like, baby, just I, I need this is me time. Yeah, like you can... was it to an Alexis Texas scene? No. No, nah, fuck you. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, the phone didn't like that either. It dropped on that ass. Yeah, I definitely got caught jerking on before. What type of porn turns you on? You said that you've been an avid porn person. You said that you've been talking to Adam Twenty Two about Listen being, what I used to do. being a porn person over here. What is I've your? Been, I've been watching porn since I was like six, seven. Oh. Like I, we used Nobody to. Nobody was watching your yo, internet time, huh? Yo, we used to go. <laughs> On family vacations and like being hotels, and when everybody left, did they the give you an iPad and they're like, "No, Here. listen, this is before iPads." When I was seven years old, okay, and we went on a family trip, everybody left the hotel, and I would be in a hotel room ordering the porn oh. on the key. Whenever you could order it on pay per view, yo, I've been a your, I'm your a mom got mad at you. She knew. Listen, they thought it was somebody else ordering it. They didn't know it was me. They found out it was me when. Like five years later, when I was um, at somebody's house and I went to their basement, I was doing it on the computer. They was like, "Oh, this whole time it was you, you fucking creep." You bamboozled them. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your porn search history? Um, what kind BBW, of porn? Are... BBW Latinas. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Pogs, of course. Pogs. I love Pogs. Um, Blacked. <laughs> I watch Blacked a lot. You have a membership. No, I don't have a membership. No, I just uh, go on Pornhub oh, X videos. Oh, you're a free motherfucker. Okay. okay yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not paying for no OnlyFans, none of that. Why That's would I do, rude. Why would I do that? You're not supporting my cause. People like me, we want those things. If someone, if you were a music person and they were stealing your music, you'd be pissed, right? Yes or no? No. Don't because you as fucking long as it's lie. getting out there, what the fuck? No, where are you getting your residuals? It, it's not you're all, a businessman. You better stop playing with Miss Texas. Okay, but, I, but listen, when I did my jackets, I made 13 to give away. To celebrities. Okay, so what if there was 13 bootleg ones? You'd be upset? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? You can't count every dollar. You can't count every dollar, but every fucking free view is a lot. Are your videos on Pornhub? Unfortunately. Well, then that, well, why would I pay for that if I can get you for free? Yeah, I would never fucking ever in life. <laughs> this is horrible conversation. <laughs> I gotta be. I gotta be. What? You can't support a cause. No, I was. You can't support. Now that we're friends, you can't listen, support, hold on. Oh, this, now this, this, the script has that, flipped. No, no, it's not Texas. flipped. Now that we're friends, I met you in person. We cool now. I will support your OnlyFans. But see, for me, I think it's the opposite. Once I'm your friend and I know that, I can't watch you fuck. No. So then, mm -hmm. how you gonna support me then? Uh, your jacket, your fucking clothing. You ain't. You try to answer that quick, you, like you on. But you're not a porn star yet. You want to be, right? And we're talking about you. No, I want to be a porn director. I don't want Whatever wanna... you want to be. But, yeah. okay, I said I would sign you to Texas Row. You know what I mean? I'm not still filling out the name. I'm not sure if that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> but it's about you being a creative. You being whatever it is. Nobody likes their shit stolen, whatever. And they say So it's, then it it's... shouldn't be on Pornhub then. That's not my it's fault. It's not that I can control that. And it's I can't anybody. control it. I'm getting it for free. Okay, so when I bootleg, I'm going to have a bootleg situation for your You're gonna shit You're going to make bootleg Supreme Jackets? Yes, I am. <laughs> Watch it. Watch that's gonna it. Help Coming me live. That's going to help me with my promotion. 2.0. It's all it's promotion. <laughs> I can't. But um, nah, my favorite, my favorite porn, like when I go. Are you watching midgets? No. Have you ever watched midget porn? No. But I do want to fuck a midget, though. I do, too. One yeah. time. Just yeah. to say I did it, to see what it would Can be I like. Can I direct that scene? If you have a fucking midget, let I me direct I wouldn't do it on camera. I would do it in my personal life. Okay. And then if I liked it that much, then maybe I would bring it to the audience. But, you know, every time I fuck shouldn't be on camera, right? So I got to have my own things. I got to have personal. my own lick back. You got to have your private talk. One, I got to have a private something. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, I like um BBW Latinas. I like Pogs. I like casting, backroom casting couch. Like, I like when they act like they don't know what's going on and they coming up for a, a rap video. Okay. I like bang bus. I like okay. when they fuck them and kick, the, oh, go, what's going on with the tire? Go see with the tire and they pull off. Oh, okay, like, now I, like, I know where to put you in the category genre of yeah. things. Okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe I should direct your first scene and then I can show you how a real legend I'm, does I it. I want to be the director, though. Yeah, can but, we co-direct? But I can co-direct you, but you're going to have to be the talent. All right, we can do that. So then I'll if let you... If that's the only way I can get you to do that, we can do it. Yeah. We can have a co-producer. Got you. Yeah. Got you. I'll let it happen. Got you. Just because we're friends. Got you. <laughs> Jim and I, Virgo connection. <laughs> All right. Romantic questions. Would you consider yourself a romantic? Yeah. What was the most romantic thing you've done for a partner or a girl open you've liked? The, open up the door for them. Oh, get my in the car. God. That's the most romantic thing Men you've done? Men don't do that now. 
Yeah, but that shouldn't be the most romantic thing you do. That I mean, is a fl- romantic thing. I feel like flowers is cliche for me to say. That's like, cliche. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you could like plan a day. You could plan a like that's a cliche. Ba- everybody, does, everybody does that. No, they do not. This is the problem. This is the problem don't plan with dates. twenty-something-year-old men. They think everyone just does. No, that. I plan no. dates, but I'm saying I don't want to say that as the most. But, but that could be a romantic thing. If you're romantic, that means maybe you just take the time and you listen to what your partner needs, and you're like knowing all her stuff. See, like, I'm not doing all that listening. I don't hear what I'm talking. You are bad at listening. No, I'm a. But I give great advice. Everybody tells that me I give the best advice. That is not the same thing as listening. I have to listen to give you. I have to listen to your situation to give what you advice. What about your own? I have to listen to your situation. You need a lot of work. I don't. You do. I don't. G- just come to Miss Texas. You're not wrong, right? Because you give good advice. But if you can't listen to the person that you're with, then you shouldn't be fucking with that person in the first place. That's not true. If pers- what if that they person, always have a problem? Then you shouldn't be with that person if they always have a problem. You yeah. should be looking for people that like uplift you, that are encouraging, that give you good energy, that are you want to listen to them. Not where you're like, please shut the fuck up. Because if someone said that to me, oh, we're fighting and we're Mom, not being together. But every woman talks too much. That's a bad trait that all women have. They talk too Maybe much. Maybe the women you've been around, but I can't. You can't say rope us all into all. I could be all men are fucking misogynist fucking. No, that you can. Mean that, gen- that's no, true. No, you can generalize statements. Maybe the all wi- men are but, misogynistic pigs. No, maybe, they might just not mm, tell you, or they mm. might not show it, but they are. I don't know. Not... That's like that's like saying you can't generalize saying that every man is horny, and I feel like they are. Mm, not at all. Do you? So you don't believe in stereotypes? No, I do. I not. do. I do. I don't because I have been in a field where people stereotype me, and I am a porn star. Yes, do I like sex? Yes, call me a whore what you want. Doesn't bother fucking me at all. But there is different sides of me of my sexuality that I like, that I express, and how I am in my personal life, and I am in my business life. So it's diff- it's different variations of the person that you get. Now, each person brings out different unique things out of people that mm-hmm. I may not be, say, hypothetically, if we're together. Yeah. Maybe I don't do certain things because that just doesn't get me off or I don't need to, like, whatever. Or maybe whatever the situation is, just every person is different. What's your preference for porn? If you're watching porn, what do you type in? What's I don't your watch search? porn. If you did, what would be your searches, though? I don't watch porn. I just do it. But if I had to watch So it, you don't masturbate? I do, but I don't, again, I could watch the news. I don't have to watch oh, it. But, yeah, like, yeah, I, but for me, again, it's more about experiences. I have a Pandora's box of there are certain key moments where I've been fucked amazing in my life. And you just think about whatever, that. And I go to those moments. And so that's why I was like, when I say the TV's on, it's not because I'm watching the TV. You're it's just because having a flashback in my in mind, mind, I have a perverted mind so I can get myself off regardless of where I'm at. Got gotcha. you. Kind of thing. Love that. But yeah, so it's just, I'm just a freak. Okay. Favorite song if you... um. We're going to lay it down. Do you play any kind of soundtrack in the back? Oh, this might not be a popular thing to say right now, but I got to keep it a buck. I listen to R. Kelly when I'm... Okay. Yeah. Is there a particular one? I just put them on shuffle. Okay. Yeah, R. Kelly or Trey songs or like Pause. I don't know why. Is that Pause that I'm saying men that I listen to? No, because it's about a type of music that is getting you when yeah. you're in the mood for your sexual playlist. Yeah, I, I turn on my, my, my boy R. Kelly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last two questions. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna do kinky bondage. Yes or no? Have you tapped into the bondage world? I've never done it, but I'm open to it. Okay. I'm not one of those people that'll be closed off to any new experience. Like I want to try everything. So if a lady brought you down and she's like, "This is my dungeon. Like I, I want you to like that. tie me up, do whatever," you would be like, "Yeah, into I'm it. with it." Okay. I'm not a party pooper. I'm with everything. What is the craze, or is there? Craziest thing a partner has ever asked you to do that you declined? Uh, um, I don't think I've ever declined a crazy request. Okay, was there a crazy request that you were like, you tried? Yeah, uh, I let it? a girl pee on me before. Did it do anything for you? Where'd she pee? It in your mouth, on your dick, like, on your what? Everything. You peed like all my, over like, you. like my torso, my dick, everything. Like, okay. Yeah, but no. Nah. Did you pee back on her? Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. that do something for I you? I peed on her in the shower, though. We was in the shower, and she was like, yo, just pee on me. And I just peed on her in the shower. Okay. Yeah. Dirty talk, yes or no? Love it. It has to be a yes. You can't just be sitting there not saying anything. Could you give us an example of your dirty talk? Well, when I'm having sex with white girls, like, I want them to call me a nigga. Okay. So yeah. that's your, that's your that's, fetish. Yeah, I like, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Dominant or submissive? Both. Both. Yeah. 
Okay. Main majority so if of the time. Somebody like wanted to handcuff you and do some shit to you. You would allow it. I'm with it. Okay. As, but so you freaky. You're down for whatever. I'm, I'm a, as long as within your limits I'm of whatever. Because I'm sure. What are some of your boundaries that you're I don't completely have no, off? No. I don't have. Uh, it's no. So if re- someone's eating your ass, you're for it. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All down. Are you yeah. eating ass? Yeah. Into That's it. a part of sex. Getting your ass ate and eating ass is a part of sex. I'm not mad at that, but some men are like very questionable about I it. Feel like some the, people I feel like get the very men, like. Yeah, that's that's because they probably like insecure about their sexuality. I know I'm. Not, I think it's a lot me? of things. I think it's insecure about sexuality. I think it's also insecure about society's opinion of what it is. I don't for care me, about it's what like society sex think about is me. sex, and if you like it, then if we're all for it, then let's if a do girl want to eat my ass, I'm with it. Eat my ass. I don't give a fuck. Have you ever been to a swingers club? No. But would, I have been would. invited, though, a couple times. Okay. I just didn't have the person to go with me. Okay. So that's the last The Truth With Texas. Mm-hmm. I feel like we got to know each other a little bit more intimately. We Absolutely. had some wild questions. I let you insert some questions. Mm-hmm. But now is your final two. You got two questions asked, Miss Texas, before we get out of here. What are those questions? Two questions. Um, Was there ever a time where you felt uncomfortable on set? 1,010%. And what did you do when you was uncomfortable? Did you? Um, I went to the bathroom. I called my agent and I said that I wasn't okay with what we're doing, what was going on. And they told me to don't talk to anybody, get my stuff and go into my car and leave. And then I did. And then that was it. Um, another question is, have you ever thrown up on a dick before? Give a head. I have never thrown up on a dick before. I almost, but I swallowed. If whatever Swallowed was going, throw up. 100 or 10 percent, I wasn't going to throw up on someone that's just not cute to anybody. So I definitely <laughs> swallowed something <laughs> down. You know, you just make it happen. Um, but yeah, I'm a I'm a professional at all times. Even when I'm having sex in my personal life, there's a certain things like I'm a big about hygiene and certain things as well. So if someone threw up on me or did something, I would feel a type of way. So no one's going to ever tell, hey, Alexis Texas threw up on me. Not you got to give me one more question because it just came to my mind. Last okay, question. Fine. Do you like head more or you like getting fucked more giving head i was like which says to the word yeah giving um, head. You like giving when head i more? give head i my pussy gets wet i do enjoy i'm a pleaser so i like my man to be pleased and so but if i had between the two i'm getting fucked i yeah. can't just please you and i don't get pleased because i'm so turned on that i need something to finish me yeah but i will definitely start that way and do you moan when you give head that's another question, but oh, well, um, yes, to, no, it, it, was, it was all encompassing. Um, for me, again, you watch my scenes. You know I fucking moan. You know I do fucking things. You know I twerk at the same fucking time. So that's what Miss Texas does. I hope you guys have loved this interview. I've had a fun time getting to know. Private talk. My love. Please plug everything that you have that we can support you. Absolutely. So yeah, just go to my Instagram, Supreme underscore McGriff. Everything's there. Links in the bio. You can, yeah, just go to my Instagram. Everything's there. That's the only thing I want to plug. Shout right. out everybody that loves life. Supreme McGriff, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate you taking the time again to talk to Miss Texas. And um, I hope you're ready for the twerk contest. Yeah, I'm definitely ready <laughs> for that. My judge, number one judge over here. Let's I don't go. let a lot of people judge, but I think he's got it in him. We're going to find out. Shout out Ross, too, by the way. I'm in Miami. Got to shout out Rick Ross, man. All right, Private Talk. Thank you so much. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and until we meet again. This episode is sponsored by Bet Online.